In today's video, I'm photographing otters in the heart of Edinburgh. I've come to Dunsapy Lock and the reason I'm here is that a friend of mine, the excellent guy, Cameron Robinson, sent me a text last night saying, hey, did you know that there is an otter in Dunsapy Lock? Do you want to go and photograph it? And I said, yes, because I love otters and I really want to do wildlife photography. So I was up at five and I cycled here and met him just before sunrise. Beautiful light everywhere. And he was right, there is an otter here. It wasn't more than a few minutes after we arrived and we saw it bobbing its head out, obviously having caught something under the water, it was chewing away as it floated along the surface. It's absolutely incredible to see and it's amazing to think that this lock, which is just underneath the Hill Arthur's Seat in Edinburgh, is basically in the city and yet here we've got otters. Conditions this morning are absolutely amazing. We've had this gorgeous early sunrise, golden light sweeping across the area. It does mean I've been having to sort of move around the lock to make sure that I'm not shooting into the sun, but instead that light is falling on the otter. So it's definitely been a, a case of move and shoot, move and shoot. We're using my 70 to 200, which is fine, but it's not really long enough for wildlife. Ideally, I'd be on something 400 plus. I did borrow Cam's um, 1.4 extender, so I think that took this to about, what, 300-ish, 270mm, something like that. Um, which did give me some extra uh, scope to work with, but still, like, ideally, I'd be on a 400 plus, maybe even a 600 to get right up close on it. But the technique for something like this is fairly straightforward. You kind of need to pick a good spot for where you think the otter is going to be doing some things and then sit down and stay as still and as quiet as you can. If you're walking around, crashing through the bushes, making lots of noise, you're going to scare it away. It's going to move to the other side of the lock and then, again, this lens isn't going to be able to get anything at all. So instead, trying to keep pretty much in one or two different spots um, only moving around when I can see that it's got underwater just so that I don't scare it away but then it's really just patience keeping your eye out looking for those ripples on the water that might tell roughly where it's going and where it might pop up settings wise I'm at roughly around f4 but that's changing um, I've bumped my ISO to about 500 because I need to keep quite a fast shutter speed. I don't want any kind of motion blur. Obviously it does move quite quickly, particularly when it's diving up and down. So I don't want it to come out blurred. So my shutter speed at the moment is somewhere around 2,000th of a second, which is more than enough to absolutely freeze it in motion. One of my absolute favourite things about doing any kind of wildlife photography like this is just how peaceful it is. I usually don't get animals, certainly not things like otters, that are typically pretty nervous, rightly nervous. I don't usually get them this close to cities, so to be able to cycle half an hour from my house to get here, and then just sit on the shore of this lock, looking out, it's beautiful. I'm just moving around the banks a bit. I think the otter's sort of moved to the other side of the lock, but I have seen him around this end most often, so I just want to put myself in a good position for when he comes back, if he comes back. There's obviously no telling 
whether he's necessarily going to be here at all. And I could have got up at dawn, cycled all the way here with a backpack full of kit, only to find that he was a no-show. But so far I have seen him a few times, so I'm pretty confident about being able to get some shots, or at least just one shot, which at least proves that there is an otter here, and I'm not just making a video about nothing. It goes without saying, of course, that using burst mode on your camera is an absolute must. Fire off as many frames as you can, because when it does pop its head over the water, it's only for a very, very brief moment, maybe a second, maybe two. But in that time, if you can fire off 20 frames rather than one, then you've given yourself a much bigger chance of getting at least one photo, which is uh, going to be worth keeping. I'm definitely I've just seen him coming out over the water just over there maybe 40 feet away so I'm just keeping my eye on that location oh there he is oh, back down it's such a brief window when he's actually up such a little quick up and then back down. So I'm using just this central focusing point, just right in the middle. When he pops up, quick half press, locks on, and then I just fire away while he's there. Problem is, is that with this, this setup that you're on right now, I can either film me or I can film the otters. <laughs> so I can't show both at once. So instead I've been trying to snap some shots on this and then also use the zoom on this just to get some quick bits of quick bits of video just so I can actually prove that it is there this is absolutely one of those occasions though that even if I didn't get any photos at all which is quite likely to be honest it's just an absolute pleasure sitting here peacefully looking out listening to the birds and just watching the otter play in the water it's only nine o'clock, I've been here two hours. I can't think of a better way of starting a day. Of course it is really important to stay quiet, stay low, don't make yourself too much of a distraction because you will put it off. So if you're going around wearing a bright luminous coat that makes loads of noise every time you move, then odds are the otter is going to see you and it's going to go away which is the case for any wildlife that you might be trying to photograph, but particularly anything like otters, which are naturally more timid. You need to account for that. Try and stay low and stay quiet. And frankly, that's just the best way to be with any kind of wildlife. Like this is their home. Don't go blustering through, making endless noise. Because not only might you not get the photo you want, but you might actually scare them off altogether. This otter, if it gets disturbed too much, too often, it'll just end up leaving and going somewhere else and then it's ruined for everyone. That'll be a real shame. Right now, I am trying to very gingerly make my way around this bit of the shore. There is a little footpath that goes around here. That's the other thing. Always stick to footpaths when you're in places like this. Don't go crashing through bushes and ruining plants, particularly anywhere where there might be nesting birds, which that could be higher up. But this looks like it could be a good spot. I have just left my bike right over there. And it's not locked, so I'm just hoping everyone that's walking past is honest.
almost certainly can't see on this camera, but our friend is swimming just about here. I'm going to keep my position. It's too far away now for me to get decent shots. My hope is if I stay here, it's going to come over to this bank and I'm going to be able to get some great stuff. Or it might go somewhere else completely and I'm not going to get anything. So amazing to see that. Still fishing over on the far bank. Might be waiting here a little while. But also, the sun is right behind me this way. So if I was over there shooting this way, I'd get the sun right behind it. Wouldn't make for a great shot. So I'm really hoping that if he comes over here, the sun's going to be illuminating him really nicely, and I'm going to get a really, really good image from it. If I had a better lens, I could probably do a lot more from here. 200 mil might seem a lot, but for this sort of photography, it just isn't. He's just a speck in the distance, even at 200 mil. Today's video is sponsored by Sitting Uncomfortably. Do you sometimes find that your back and knees feel too healthy? Well, try sitting uncomfortably for long periods of time and see how much of a ruined person you can feel. Time to go find Cam. He's on his laptop. Here. Hello, Cam. Hey, buddy. You appear to be on your laptop. I am. I'm looking at some of the shots I've got so far today. Do you think you've got good stuff? I think so, but uh, yeah, I ran out of space. Oh no. <laughs> ran out of space and battery. That means it's been a good. <laughs> means it's been a good morning. Yeah. I think. So you are shooting video. I am on the black magic. Pocket Cinema 6K. 6K? 6K, that's that many Ks. so many Ks, Cam. Yep, I agree. And you've got a 150 to 600. See, that is the lens the that I should be using, really. None of this 200 mil nonsense. It's, it's a beast. 600. And it, you think it's big and then it gets bigger. The light is shifted. It's very, very contrasty because the sun is much more overhead now. Been here a few hours and also the otter does seem to have disappeared and hasn't been out in quite some time. So. I think that's calling it a day. I'm hoping that I've got at least one or two shots from this whole session, which might be good enough to put on screen. I suppose if I haven't, and I probably won't be making this video at all, and if I have, then you'll have seen them right at the beginning. So this is a bit redundant. Yes, it was redundant past me, as I did indeed get a handful of shots. They're decent enough, but I was really lacking with only a 200mm lens. The closest I got was this shot here, which also required a lot of cropping in Lightroom. But my favourites are these ones, which not only show the otter itself, but show the environment that it's in, which really puts it in context of those beautiful surroundings. But that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing if you don't already. And I will see you next time.